Hi, David Rosenberg here for the Psychopharmacology Institute. In this CAP, Smart Take, we'll take a close look at whether or not antipsychotic medication is safe and effective in children and adolescents with anorexia nervosa. This is especially clinically relevant because to date, there is no FDA-approved pharmacotherapy for anorexia nervosa, with pharmacologic interventions having a limited role in its treatment, particularly in children and adolescents. This report is so timely because anorexia has increased in recent years. Pharmacotherapy in anorexia nervosa is mainly directed at the associated psychiatric comorbidities and not the core symptoms of anorexia nervosa. The use of antipsychotics, particularly the second generation antipsychotics, have been advocated by some, but certainly not by all, because of their weight gain side effect, which is more pronounced in children and adolescents than in adults, and which may, in patients with anorexia nervosa, be quote unquote a good side effect. Obviously, some of the other adverse effects of the second generation antipsychotics are less welcome and of concerns, such as diabetes, metabolic syndromes, which can also be of higher risk in pediatric patients than in adult patients. So what did Prucoli and colleagues find? This is such an important and understudied area, and we desperately need more information regarding the role of pharmacotherapy in anorexia nervosa. 28 studies were examined here on the use and tolerability of antipsychotics in children and adolescents with anorexia nervosa. Unfortunately, but perhaps not unexpectedly, the quality of the observational studies was very disappointing, with only one study being considered of good quality and one considered of fair quality. Five were considered to be of poor quality, and 13 were case reports or case studies. One thing to keep in mind is that while all but one study found improvement with olanzapine for weight measures and psychopathology, the one negative study was the only study that was considered to be of good quality. Overall, most of the papers reviewed reported weight gain and improvement in depression, anxiety, obsessions, and compulsions, which are frequent comorbidities in anorexia nervosa. So we certainly aren't at a point where we can generalize this to clinical practice and say that, for example, olanzapine is safe and effective in children and adolescents with anorexia nervosa. I'm not saying don't use olanzapine in children and adolescents with anorexia nervosa. It's one of the second generation antipsychotics most associated with weight gain, which could be a good side effect in this population. But at the individual patient level, clinicians in the trenches need to exercise their own independent clinical judgment on a case-by-case -case basis because we're not at a point where we can tell that a particular patient will or will not respond to olanzapine or any other second-generation antipsychotic. Risperidone use in youth with anorexia nervosa was only described in five case reports which reported improvement in body weight measures and psychopathology with good tolerability. It proved challenging, though, to identify evidence supporting aripiprazole's use in children and adolescents with anorexia nervosa, as there were only two poor quality studies and one small case series describing its use in this population. All of the studies reported improvement in body weight measure Two of the studies suggested improved psychopathology with good tolerability. So there's a potential role for aripiprazole for improving weight gain in child and adolescent psychiatry, and it appears well tolerated. But like with the other antipsychotics, the lack of randomized control trials or even good quality trials makes it hard to make generalizable clinical recommendations for clinicians treating these patients. They also examined a study that reported on different antipsychotics in youth with anorexia nervosa, including four treated with haloperidol, three with olanzapine, and one with risperidone. Improvement in weight and psychopathology was reported for most, but there were a lot of problems with the studies which were very small, with very small numbers of different antipsychotics, 
Some of the patients were being treated with SSRIs. And there were also three case reports regarding the first generation antipsychotic chlorpromazine, which suggested weight gain. It's not surprising that there's very limited reporting of the first generation antipsychotics, such as chlorpromazine and haloperidol, as the second generation antipsychotics are now the preferred and go to medications in clinical practice. So, what's the bottom line? At this point, psychological interventions such as cognitive behavioral therapy, family therapy, education, nutritional and dietary intervention, management of physical complications and risks, as well as pharmacotherapy of associated behavioral or psychiatric conditions are the key evidence-based treatment. At present, we can't generalize pharmacotherapy interventions in patients with anorexia nervosa, and the clinician really has to exercise his or her own individual clinical judgment. One other thing I want to mention, since the SSRI fluoxetine is FDA approved for bulimia, and it and other SSRIs have been used in patients with anorexia nervosa. The SSRIs should be avoided in patients with anorexia nervosa in the weight-depleted state, where they are not effective, have a high risk of side effects, and may actually decrease the chance of their helping when the patient attains a weight-restored state. When SSRI medicine is being considered, these can be prescribed safely and effectively in the weight-restored state, where they may in fact reduce the risk of relapse. There's also compelling data that when patients with anorexia nervosa are hospitalized, the closer they are to their ideal body weight when they're discharged, the more likely they are to maintain this weight, not relapse, not be re-hospitalized. But unfortunately, in the United States, it's often not easy to do this in patients with insurance because insurance companies often only pay for hospitalized care until the patient is quote unquote stabilized and then refuse to pay for the patient to continue to be hospitalized to achieve their ideal body weight, even though doing so reduces the likelihood of relapse and rehospitalization, which would, you'd think, decrease the cost to the insurance company by increasing the likelihood of the patients not being rehospitalized, not to mention all the other good things the patient and their family having a better quality of life, as well as a reduced risk of death in anorexia nervosa, which we have to remember the mortality in anorexia nervosa is significant. It's 10%.